Welcome to another episode of Cooking with the Murphys. Tonight, we are having homemade onion rings. What? I've got this special mix. You can get it at your local grocery store. This mix in three quarters of a cup of water provides the batter. And then over here, we have the onions. Giant white onions. Sheesh. And then over here, we have our hot oil. I have to add some oil to that, and I have to continue to check the temperature. Mm, using my thermometer. Okay. 400 degrees oil, three eighths of an inch slices of onions. Okay. One bag of mix, and we are going to have the best onion rings in the world. Say two guys. Mm -hmm. Giant onions need to be chopped up and then cut into three eight inch slices. Get rid of the stuff that we're not gonna use. And that includes the skin. And the onion has many layers. You don't eat that part. You don't eat this part. Toss it. And... Why don't you eat that part? No, you don't eat that part. Why not? Because they won't look pretty. So that's how you make the onion. of rings to choose from. Don't touch your eyes after you do this. Correct. <laughs> Public service announcement. I think that happened to you once, didn't it? Well, yeah, I don't really cry from the onions. I don't know that they really are that strong that they make you cry when you cut them. But there you have it. We have a whole stack of raw onions. And next we are going to make the batter. All right, here is our Concord Fresh Sauces Tempura Style Onion Batter Mix. Where does one find a bag like that? Well, they carry it at your local grocery store. It only costs about a dollar. That's it? Mm-hmm. And okay. then here is one half of a cup of cold water. Okay. And here is a quarter of a cup of cold water. Okay. And all you have to do is Try not to get it all over the place. Stir it up, scrape in the sides. Make yourself a nice, thin, extra light tempura batter. Okay. And stir it until there's no more chunks in it. Shall we tell people you used to be the master chef at Hacienda in Scranton, does which anyone, is why you're so good at it? Does anyone remember the Hacienda in Scranton? Probably not. God, you're talking about 30 years ago? 
But you don't look no. that old. It can't be 30 years ago. Not 1987. 37 years ago. How's but that? You don't look that old. I don't look that old, right? It's like got nice and smooth. I only see a couple little chunkies in there. Are chunkies good thing or bad thing? Chunkies are a bad thing because they show up on the onion rings. It's got to be a very thin, very smooth batter. Okay, check. All right, we got it. Is that ladle lickable? No, you can't lick that. Why not? Because, all right. Now, the other thing that we have to do is we have to check the temperature of the oil. Why is that? You can't put them in there when the oil is not hot enough because they will not cook right. They have to cook immediately upon entering okay. the oil. And we want to get 400 degrees out of this. Where are we at? 362, 380, 399, 402. I better turn it down a little bit and wipe off the thermometer. Now that is hot enough to cook our onion rings. We need some implements to turn the onion rings with. We're also going to need some ventilation. Oh yeah. So I'm not turning it on high because we're filming right now, but when I'm not filming, it will be on high. Yep. And what else? I'm going to have to open the back door because it might get smoky in here. And please note there are no kitties in the kitchen. Oh! We got one. There he is. Come on, Fox. That's our cat, Red Fox. Um, all right. All right. So, let's take one of those handful of onion rings and see how we do. Throw them, roll them, let them drip on the side. Wrap them in the hot oil. Coat them. Roll them at least twice. Wrap them in the hot oil. Would you like to tell people the history of why you're making, why you wanted to make onion rings? Because when we went to Maine for our lobster rolls, everybody up there had their own homemade onion rings, and I think it was my favorite part of the meal. And there is a restaurant locally that has the best onion rings. Bouches has good onion rings. Located in Milford, Pennsylvania. All right, and then you just repeat until the fryer is full. Looks like I can get one more in there comfortably. And we'll check back once they are finito. They're cooking fast. Whoa, look at those babies. Wow, man, they look really good. And my favorite thing to dip them in is ketchup. So we're no. going to get them with some ketchup. Ranch dressing. They've got to cool off for right now. All right. I might have some blue cheese dressing. We can try that. But for right now, I also have leftover pizza from Mike's. That's in right. My oven. We're gonna oh. we're gonna show you this pizza as part of the episode, guys. All some right. bonus smell o vision. Here you go. Whoa, look at that. Woo. Mike does it right. All right, guys, he says it takes him back to Maine. Let me be the judge of this. And let me tell you, I do not think that ketchup goes on onion rings. Mm -hmm. Hmm. How'd I go? Don't eat my onion ring. I am. The batter's very light. The onion is not overly powerful. I would say next to Balch's in Milford, these are the best onion rings we've had. <laughs> all right, and you guys all know that no cooking with the Murphys would not be complete without my dry drinker diary segment. This is the Erdinger non-alcoholic beer. They say that Erdinger non-alcoholic beer, according to the internet, supports the regeneration process. There's only 25 calories in this beer. It's astonic and it's got some vitamins in it. And it also says that it's a spicy malt, noting harmonizing, excellent caramel sweet nuances. Hmm, let's check it out. Here's our Erdinger non-alcoholic beer. 
We're going to pour it into the glass. I'll probably get yelled at saying that I don't know how to pour a beer, but hey, that's okay. Hey, that wasn't even a full bottle of beer. And it only filled half my glass, man. Looks good. I guess they, when they sent that air dinger, it must not have been filled all the way up because it only gave me a half a glass. This must be one of them that was not even full, but... Ooh, it's got an interesting aroma to it. Oh, I like this. Now, this is what I call a really good non-alcoholic beer. Let's have Mr. Murphy try it and see what he thinks. Mm. Air Dinger non-alcoholic beer. That's actually got a pleasant taste to it. Right? Mm-hmm. Full body. Doesn't taste like it's watered down or anything. No. Nope. Good color. You have a good head on it? Yeah. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. And he's pulled out the last of the onion rings, kids. Here's what's left over. Not too bad. No more batter. No more oil. Mm -hmm. Now let's just had to eat them all. Yeah. And this pizza. <laughs> if you guys like tonight's segment of Cooking with the Murphys, be sure to watch our other videos in this segment. Mm -hmm. And after you've watched enough, if you think you can handle us, hit the subscribe, like, button comment give us a comment below. let us know what you think don't think what do you want us to try next tell one of your friends to come just watch one our channel. just one and we'll see you in the next episode good Bye. night everybody